Hello and welcome to Rainbow Praise. Thank you for tuning in today. And can you believe it's already the second month of 2017? Um, no, time goes by way too fast. Way, 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 way too, too fast. fast That's isn't it? right. I mean, uh, but you know, I, I'm talking about this week. Th this week, I'm going to talk about standing on the rock of our salvation. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody knows Jesus is the rock. Yes. And that's where we get our strength. That's where we get everything that we need to live our life and have the good life that God promised us in John 10, 10. Yes. And of course, the Word of God is another rock that we stand on. Of course, mm -hmm. we have Jesus, our salvation, our rock, but the Word of God is another rock that we stand on because the Word tells us everything we need to help us to receive all the blessings that God has for us. You know, honey, I like to call it our instruction book. Right. It gives us all the instructions that we need for a good life. That's right. So why don't we go right now where I'm speaking on standing on the rock of our salvation. Second Samuel 22. Second Samuel 22. And we're going to do 1 and 2, verse 32 and verse 47. All right. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Jump to 32. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? Now 47. The Lord lives, blessed be my rock, let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. Now this is what David had to say on the day when the Lord delivered him from all of his enemies and from Saul. He is celebrating, God has proven that God had proven to be his rock. He was glorifying God when he said, God is the rock of my salvation. David had a re revelation of God being the rock that he could stand on. You know, uh, if you're going to get a, in this part of the country, especially around this area right here, uh, if you're going to build a building, you got to go down and get into the solid stuff. A lot of these houses are built behind us. Even our, our uh, 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 student housing across the street, we're always having to, that because they didn't do that and we're having to jack up the foundation and so forth and so on. Uh, this building right here, uh, the engineers told, said, oh, well, the brown shale is good. And old Mr. Harrison that been drilling, he said, I've been drilling here in this soil for 36 years. And he said, if you're going to, my company's going to do it, we're going to blue shale because it'll hold. And uh, there is piers underneath this building. I don't know how many, a hundred and some odd piers underneath this building that goes all the way down to, to, to the solid rock, the blue shell rock that'll hold. And uh, they say, engineers say you can drive a semi-truck into that corner of the building back there and you never feel it over here on this side at this corner of the building. Of course, you got to realize that uh, when you get in those halls out there, that, that uh, there, there's 100 yards that away, that away, that away, and that away. So this is a pretty good-sized building. But, you know, uh, the, it, it's, it has to be anchored on something solid because if it don't, because of this soil, the way it is, uh, it, 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 it moves, it expands, and so and if you're not anchored on something solid, you're in trouble. Hello? You see, David had the revelation of God being the rock that he could depend on. You see, <laughs> David may have had the memory in his mind of when he was anointed to be king when he was 17 years old. And, and he was convinced that God would take care of God was what he could stake his life on. And he understood that God was the rock of his word. He understood that he could depend upon the rock, the word of God. You know, 
over in the Mediterranean Sea, at the entrance to the Mediterranean Sea, right at the southern tip of Spain, there's a rock. Anybody ever studied about that? How many of you know about that? Well, we got a few people that know about that. Well, I'll tell you about it. It's called the Rock of Gibraltar. It is about 1,398 feet tall. For you that need meters, that's 426 meters. It's one of the the largest and most significant rock formations that we have in our world. But I tell you what, I'd rather stand on the rock, the Word of God, than stand on the rock of Gibraltar. You know, we used to sing a song, and we still sing it sometimes around here occasionally. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. If we're going to experience all that God has for us, we have to get the revelation that the Word of God is our rock in every situation. You know, how do we relate to God? Through his word, right here. In fact, we form all of our ideas and our beliefs about God from the word of God. Do you understand that? This is where we form, get our beliefs about God. We form all of our ideas and everything about God because you remember that it says in John, uh, the, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Now I realize that's talking about Jesus, but Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they're all, they're all one and the same. Although they're three different distinct uh, personalities, they're one and the same in every other aspect in all their characteristics. So, you know, one person is going to say, Jesus is my rock. Another person say, God is my rock. Another person holds up the word of God and says, this is my rock. Hey, all three of them are correct because they're all the same. You know, God's word is something that we need to get established This is what we stand on. This is our rock. So many times people, this is, okay, this is the word of God. But this is what we stand on. The word, God's word. Now I do it all the time. People get on to me for it, but I do it anyway. I sometimes will stand on my Bible just like I am now. I do that for a reason. I want to let the enemy know that I am not just standing on something that I heard or what. I'm standing on God's word and the word says that he cannot fail. The word says that he will always come through. I want the devil to know that this I'm standing on the word of God. I actually stand on my Bible. I do it many, many times because Somebody said, well, that's the Word of God. No, it is the written Word of God in a piece of paper. But, uh, you know, that (laughs) the Word of God is our rock. You know, when I was growing up, we, you know, I, I sometimes think the old, sometimes we call them saints, but the old people of the church of old, I I sometimes think they had a better understanding of the Word of God than we do because they didn't have any of the modern conveniences that we do. They had no televisions. Very few of them had radios. If they did, I mean, I remember when I was a a little boy, first of all, my my grandpa, they had, uh, you know, they had uh, out there, they was out in the country, and, uh, you know, uh, they didn't, the rural electrical system wasn't in yet. They had, we still had uh, coal oil. Y'all call it kerosene. We used to call it coal oil. How many of you remember when they used to call it coal oil? See? But, and, and in fact, I still have, in, at home, I still have grandma, one of grandma's 
coal oil lamps, and it works. I got oil in it because if the electricity goes out, I can light that thing. I know, I know how to do it, you know. You got to be, you know, and you got to light it just right and put the chimney on it just right so you don't get smoke in the chimney, and then you can't, it messes up. The, how many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all ever had to do that? <laughs> I got a few people that know, know where I'm talking about. But he had a radio, and it was a, Battery powered radio, not not like our, our these transistor radios. It was different battery powered. How many of you remember those old? And uh, he would only listen to it at a certain time of uh, every day because he didn't want to run his battery down. <laughs> and but today we have all kinds of modern convenience. In fact, I was in the car the other day, and uh, I. I normally listen to Enlightened, but I saw her tuning around on the on my FM radio, and, and I got one station I like to listen to sometimes when I'm driving, so uh, keep my mind from uh, you know so I don't go to sleep or something. And uh, I got it's it's called Radio Classics, and they have all and I, li I especially like it when they have some of the the Dragnet and Johnny Dollar and and uh, and then those. Uh, the six shooter with Jimmy Stewart and some of these guys, you know. And I was listening to that. I, that it tuning by that, and my grandsons had a couple of them in the car with me. And I said, "Now this is what Poppy had to do. I didn't have no television. I didn't have no no uh, playstations and all that stuff that you kids got. We had to sit around the radio and imagine all this." And one of them said, "You know, it's really sort of fun, isn't it?" <laughs> I said, "Well, I guess so." <laughs> but. The, the, the saints of old, they didn't have conventions and meetings that they go to like we do here nowadays. And, you know, uh, they didn't, most of them didn't have any money to travel anyway. And the Word of God's all they had. This was it. I think they had a better understanding of what God's Word would do for them. You know, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they... Maybe they, they did, I don't know. But it seems that we have the mindset in this day and age that we got to get to where this special meeting where God's moving or we got to go over to this conference where God's moving or we got to go to somewhere. No, we don't have to go anywhere but right here. You don't even have to leave your house. You've got it right here. The same power that's moving there will move where you're at if you learn the Word of God. It's the Word of God. You know, uh, and thank God for our conferences that we have like this when we come together, but we need to realize that we don't have to wait for the conference. We don't have to wait for winter Bible seminar. We can have the moving of the power of God in our midst all of the time in our houses. Come on. You know, we got to realize that this is our rock of deliverance and salvation and healing and everything else. You know, uh, the Bible is not empty words. They're powerful words. You know, every word is filled with power. You know, my dad used to say, son, you say more in 30 minutes than some people do in an hour. And I said, well, what are you talking about? And he said, because you don't, put, you don't put any extra words in. It's just boom, 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 and that's it. You don't put much filler in there. And I said, well, what's the use for filler when you can just go straight to the point? <laughs> and that's sort of the way I am in everything. I, my wife tells me sometimes you're too blunt. <laughs> but I can tell you one person I want to be blunt with, and that's the devil. I want him to know what the Word of God has to say. Therefore, he cannot have any control in my life. We need to get a hold of the fact, that, that fact. That, you know, Hebrews 11, 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the what of God? Word of God. What have I been talking about? The Word of God is our rock so that the things are seen were not made with things which were, are visible. The power of God created everything, the Word of God, actually, I should say, created everything that we see. 
Now, 1 Peter 1, 23. Having been born not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Peter calls the word of God incorruptible. Then if it's incorruptible, it can't decay. It's not subject to death. The word of God is not subject to being corruptible, decaying, or anything else. When you stand on the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living, all-powerful, Word of God, then it takes the pressure off. Don't get under pressure. Stand on the Word. Hey, you're not strong enough to take the pressure. But if you let the Word of God be what you stand on, then let the Word take the pressure. See, when the devil comes along putting the pressure on you, oh, you just say, hey, I'm standing on the incorruptible rock of God's word. So I'm not paying any attention to you, Mr. Devil. The word will take all the pressure off. I don't have to be pressured. He's already taken care of it. See, when you, hit, when you understand that you can stand on the rock of the word, you can just lean back and relax in the midst of the firepower. Hello. You know, when I was in the Army, 60, what, 64? I was in from 62 through 65. But I, in 64, I was overseas. And we were on the island of Komoa right up against Red China. And every other night, uh, they would fire over our hostel, 14 Americans out there, and hit up there. And the first, they'd, when you first go out there, if you get a new guy out, you don't tell him about it. And the first night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I heard, those, I heard those shells exploding. Boom! Man, and I, I, I had already seen that there was a steel helmet up there, and, and, and you know, and, and so, man, I grabbed that thing and dove underneath my, my bunk, you know. I dove underneath there, and the old sergeant on the other side, he was laughing at me. He said, they do that every other night. Do you know that... You get to where you hear it, but you don't even wake up. You just sort of in your mind, you sort of semi-wake up and you just say, oh, they're at it again and go right back to sleep. Hey, that's what you can do when you got the word of God and the devil starts firing his barrages at you. All you have to do is say, oh, the devil's at it again. (laughs) Because you're standing on the word. Yeah, say, hey, the devil gonna come at you. Don't you worry about it. He is gonna come at you. You know, some people uh, think that they're out of the will of God because things is happening. Hey, you, if something ain't happening, you are probably out of the will of God. Because if you're in the will of God, the devil gonna be attacking. Because he don't want you to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. That's why you stand on the word. The Word is my rock. Turn to your neighbor and say, The Word's my rock. I cannot be moved. Our situations change, circumstances change, ideas and philosophies change. But the incorruptible Word of God never, 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 never. You can't say enough nevers. It never changes. It's been the same since the day he spoke it, and it'll be the same till the day Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of glory and takes us out of here. It will not change. You can count on it. I hope you got a hold of the message I was talking about standing on the rock. 
And, you know, uh, we, we're talking about standing on the rock of Jesus. But if you don't know Jesus. That's right. Then you can't. He's not your rock. Yes. And I would like to pray a prayer with you. If you, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior or if you know what it is, but you know you're not exactly where you should be, you, you, you backed off and you just need a rededication prayer, I would ask you to pray this prayer with me right now. Repeat it after me with Miss Lynette right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. That if I would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That if I would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And confess him with my mouth. And confess him with my mouth. I would be saved. I would be saved. I'm confessing him as Lord right now. I'm confessing him as Lord right now. And I believe that in my heart. And I believe that in my heart. And I thank you. And I thank you. That I've become a new person in Christ that Jesus. That I've become a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you happen to pray that prayer with us, would you just go to rhema.org or email us at partner services at rhema.org and tell us that, that you prayed that prayer with us. And I'll be glad to send you a little book called The New Birth that talks about salvation. So please, if you prayed that prayer with yes. us for the first time or prayed that prayer in rededication, let us know, okay? And we want to say welcome to the family of God. I'll yes. tell you what, it's a yes. big family. And we you know, if, if they would like to see this program again, mm -hmm. They can, they can go to uh, on, on Demand and they can see this program again or they can go to Roku and yes. it'll be on there. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's, it's just great that uh, y actually it's at Raymond.org, Video On Demand. Yes. You can, you, can see the, you can see this program if you'd like to see it and then you can go to Roku and subscribe to our channel and you can watch our Sunday morning services our and, camp meeting, and our see winter a lot Bible of videos seminar. that we oh do. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and there's all kinds of different things on there right now. That in fact, Kenneth Hagin's uh, Kenneth E. Hagin, that's my dad. Yes. He, 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 Believers Authority's there, and uh, if Raymond Praise is yeah, there. Yeah, if you missed one of them, you can get it there. Yes. So, <clears throat> just wanted to remind you about all of that. Well, honey, our offer for this month is a very good deal. Yes. Half price. It is your dad's uh, How to Be Led by the Spirit of God. Yes. Uh, six CDs. I'll tell you what, he does a wonderful teaching on that. Yes. So six How CDs. How to Listen to Your Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then your book, I believe that this is the latest book yes, of yours. Yes, my latest book. Expect. What you can... What can you do to receive from God? This is retail value, $50.95, but we're offering it this month for $25. $25. That's oh, a yeah. savings of $25.95. Oh, yeah. I like savings. Oh, yeah. You, you, I like this sales. This lady, let me tell you, this lady, <laughs> she don't like ever drive, pay full price for anything. No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, she... Uh, my shirt, she goes online and finds find the sales, find the sales on and, and orders them. She don't pay, you know, all our decorations here on the campus, even our, even our uh, uh, office chairs and desks, yes. you you go and find I a bargain. Pray for favor. And I I'm pray not for talking. Bargains. I'm not talking about junk stuff. I'm no. talking about a bargain on quality. That's right. Stuff, and that's the way she prays for it. She does it. I get it. Praise too. the Lord. So this is a bargain. <laughs> she likes right. to offer these bargains mm -hmm. to all of you people. But besides that. It's the information that's in yes. this that is the really the important thing is the information that is there. I'll tell you, when you learn to recognize the Spirit of God and to be led by His Spirit, your life will be so much easier. And, uh, on, and in my book, Expect, that's what I'm talking about. You know, a lot of people, uh, they ask God for something, but they don't expect to get it. That's right. They yeah. think, well, maybe I might, I might get. No, expect. Yeah. You got to expect to receive before you can get, before you can, uh, before you get it. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Well, honey, can you believe that it is just two weeks away from Winter Bible Seminar? No, I can't. Wow. On this campus, February the 19th through the 24th, here on the Rayma campus, we have morning services. 
and evening services. Well, we start, actually, we, they have 8.30 mm -hmm. to 9.30, 9.30 to 10.30, and then you speak at the 10.30 service. Yeah. And then we're off in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and then at 7 p.m. I will speak. And uh, except for on Sunday, February the 19th, we have the one service and it starts at 6 p.m. Yes. In the evening. Yes. So, hey, make plans to come and be here with us. And, and if you... If you'd like to become a word partner, and somebody said, well, what's a word partner? Well, that's simply somebody that prays for us yes. and that sends in an offering that's every right. month to help us to keep this TV broadcast going all over the world. And you can go on your on your own internet, on your computer, yes. to rhema.org slash WPC. Tells you all how to sign how up to and how to be a, part, a word partner. Yeah, be a word partner with us. So I guess we better get out of here for today, but we'll be looking for you again next week at the same time on this same station. So God bless you and thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 said, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The 16th verse says, The Spirit itself, or as the margin says, Himself, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. God will enlighten us, or will guide us through our spirits. How You Can Be Led by the Spirit of God, Volume 1. Six inspirational CDs by Reverend Kenneth E. Hagan. Learn how to deal wisely in all the affairs of life. And Reverend Kenneth W. Hagan, in his newly released book, Expect, inspires us to look beyond our circumstances to never give up. We can expect God to move based on His Word. Both the book and the CDs can be yours for only $25. To order yours right now, call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8, or you can log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night. Don't wait. Order now. We would like to let you know when Pastor Kenneth and Lynette Hagen will be in your area for one of our Living Faith Crusades. We invite you to come and let the Word of God bring hope, help, and healing into your life. They'll be in Hampton, Virginia at Victory Life Church, March 5th through 7th with Pastors Phil and Barbara Prevett. Staunton, Virginia at Victory Worship Center and World Outreach with Pastors Ray and Liz Eppard. Summit Church in Farmington, New Mexico, April 2nd through 4th with Pastor Dan and Jane Morrison. Also make plans to attend our Rama College Weekend, April 7th through 9th here at the Rama USA campus in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. To see when the Hagans will be in your area, go to rhema.org and click on the event tab today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagan. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.